Welcome back to uh, Introduction to Chemical Engineering. Uh, we are uh, still in chemistry uh, module, um, and in, in the last uh, few videos, we talked about um, combustion reactions, um, calculations of energy change due to combustion, um, a, a little bit about the difference between gasoline and diesel. We didn't go too much in details, and I provided some links where you can go and take a look at the difference between a diesel engine and a gasoline engine and so forth. And we also had an opportunity to uh, look at the difference of, in fuel content of uh, different uh, fuels like methane, ethane, and so forth. So take a look at that very carefully, and if you have some questions, we can discuss it on the discussion board. What I'm going to do now, um, very, very briefly, talk about production. Where does gasoline come from? Uh, how do we... Um, produce gasoline and what, what the sources are. Okay, so our objective again is that we're going to talk, sorry, fuel, uh, we still have fuels in, ke in chemistry, we talked about combustion energy change, now we're going to talk about engineering um, of, um, um, in, in particular where gasoline and um, uh, diesel comes from. So um, where do we get uh, crude oil from? So almost like uh, dr it's drilling, we can, uh, we can locate uh, pools, as it were, of uh, crude oil in the ground that we essentially drill and we can uh, get it out. Of course, it's not the trivial as it sounds, but suddenly we have figured out techno the technology for uh, extracting oil from the ground has been work figured out in, in the past many decades and we know how to do it well. What is interesting uh, more recently, and this is actually fairly new in the last decade or so, we have witnessed in the last few years a huge rise in the uh, increase of crude oil and gas production using something called cr uh, fracking. Uh, it is using, a, uh, a using horizontal drilling, and we are able to now recover gas and oil, which is trapped in shale rock miles uh, beneath, the air, beneath the surface uh, in a safe way, and then get them out. And then uh, I think uh, this is September, October of 2014. The US has just passed Saudi Arabia as the largest producer of petroleum and petroleum products, uh, and, and crude oil, and uh, petroleum products. So it's an amazing technology. Um, OK, so uh, horizontal drilling methods, the reason these are now um, uh, economical is the, because of the price of the oil. Remember, um, uh, just because we have technology to do something doesn't mean that it's going to be used. It has to be economical. It has to make sense. And horizontal drilling has gotten better, and the price point for crude oil is such that it now makes it it's definitely it makes it worthwhile to use fracking for uh, recovery of gas and oil and so forth. Um, and as I mentioned, the U.S. is actually either has a poised to take or overtake Saudi Arabia uh, because of the fracking revolution, and it's just an amazing times we're living in. Uh, okay, so we get crude oil either using the traditional methods of drilling or fracking and so forth. How do we get the gasoline from it? A uh, simple principle is that you take crude oil and heat it. When you heat it, you create fractions, um, the low boiling fractions, high boiling fractions, and so forth. So you heat them and simply collect the fractions at different heights in a column, and there we are. We get uh, a very top, we get more natural gas, uh, and then uh, as we go down a column, for example, we'll get gasoline, diesel, uh, kerosene, uh, uh, aviation fuel, and so forth. Now, one of the other things that engineers also do is that when we uh, heat crude oil and get fractions, we get light fractions, we get heavy fractions. And uh, depending on the market, for example, typically the lighter fractions tend to get, you get more money for it in the market because they're more useful as fuel and so forth. So the chemical engineers have worked out methods to take the heavy fractions and break them up into smaller fractions, to um, low molecular weight fractions using something called uh, uh, f f f crack fluid capillary cracking, as an example. So you can take what is less valuable, chemically transform into something which is more valuable. And that's also an operation that chemical engineers learn uh, as to what that operation is, and they learn about how actually it's done. So this is a simple, uh, from bp.com, uh, 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 example of a distillation column, as it were. You send your heated uh, liquid into the column, and then it rises. As the vapors rise, it condenses at different heights, depending on the temperature. And then we collect different fractions. So here is an example. This is gas, gasoline, uh, natural gas, gasoline, kerosene, 
uh, and so on and so forth. So in principle, it's as simple as heating it, collecting fractions, and gasoline is one fraction. So as you can imagine, gasoline is not one compound, but a mixture of different hydrocarbons. So you collect it at different, different heights. This is just a slightly better example of how uh, the uh, crude oil gets divided up into different fractions. You can see, for example, and all the way from the bottom to, to very heavy gas oil to uh, lighter fractions at the top. Uh, so that's a mix on mobile. And the next one, what this shows is immediately after the uh, first fractionation, uh, you can, you can, do, you can um, have other chemical steps in, in it, including chemical reactors. Uh, and there are other physical changes that it can impose on these uh, different fractions that come out of the basic distillation unit. And then depending on the market, you can actually um, uh, have some um, columns producing, say, more of one versus less of the other and so forth through uh, different operating conditions and so forth. So what this is telling you is that from the, from the crude oil, we get a huge number of different products, all of which either used directly as fuel, for example, or they go on to use for making other products from, uh, from these fractions, including polyethylene, polypropylene. So many of the materials that we use daily uh, has a source in uh, the crude oil from the different fractions of the crude oil. Um, and this is just another little bit more detailed um, process flow diagram, as it were, of uh, some of the chemistries that are used to do the conversion of uh, crude oil into different fractions and different uh, materials, for example. So here you see uh, uh, some of the chemistries used to, there's a, a catalyst reactor. This is the fluid catalytic cracking unit. Catalyst reactor used to convert larger molecules into smaller molecules, which are more valuable. Um, okay, so the chemical engineering issues our students learn over the uh, uh, four years that they're, for five years they're here is uh, they learn to do calculations on how big a column sh should the column be for crude oil uh, fractionation, right? How big should it be? Uh, five feet, 50 feet, 100 feet. So there they learn uh, some of those ideas in something called a class of thermodynamics, essentially understanding the relationship between height. Uh, molecular weight, uh, boiling point, and volatility, as they call it, so on and so forth. They learn to calculate the diameter of the column, how big the column should be. For example, and it's interesting that the column calculations, the diameter and uh, height calculations, actually involve different principles. To do cal uh, diameter calculations, they rely more what we would call fluid mechanics, how gas and liquid interact with each other, and so forth. For the height calculations, and these are a rough uh, descriptions. Hard calculations, we need thermodynamics. Well, in addition to fluid mechanics, of course. And of course, heat transfer is very important, too. Um, the temperatures of operation. How do we know how at what operate, uh, what temperature should we operate the uh, distillation column? Uh, low temperature, high temperature, high pressure, low pressure, and so forth. So we have to understand, um, and also uh, the, the effect of temperature on chemical reactions, effect of temperature on the separation properties, as a separation of these components in the reactor and so forth. Um, and as far as the fluid catalytic cracking unit is concerned, uh, that is a very, very important component in chemical engineering education called chemical reaction engineering. How do we model the reactor? How do we size the reactor? How do we design the reactor to achieve the objective that we actually want? Uh, and as you can imagine, um, just running the, uh, these big columns it's, it's important that we are able to monitor and control them because these are typically high temperature, in some cases, uh, pressure is higher than atmosphere. So we have to know uh, how the uh, column is operating and control them by controlling flow rates or controlling uh, pressures and so forth. So process control and instrumentation is a very important component, very important thing the engineers and chemical engineers need to understand as far as the production of these uh, different uh, different chemicals from crude oil.